Hello my friends, my name is Chantelle and today I have a grounding earth practice for you. So it is a gentle flowing sequence where we're going to focus on grounding and connecting ourselves down to Mother Earth and connecting to ourselves. So we're going to start our practice today at the back of our mat in child's pose. So for our child's pose today, I want you to bring your legs together and then rest your arms next to your body. So drop your forehead down towards the ground. And as you come into this asana, close your eyes, relaxing your shoulders down towards the floor and take a moment to connect with your third eye chakra, connecting with your inner self, feeling grounded and connected to yourself and your practice today. Tuning into how you're feeling and let your intuition guide you as you move through this sequence. We're going to take a deep breath in. And as we exhale, relax and soften here. Feel the weight of your body melt down into the ground. As we breathe in, our stomach rises. And as we exhale, our stomach relaxes back in. Our Maharaja Pranayama, our diaphragmatic breathing. Okay, from here, just gently lift your head up a little bit and extend your arms forward. Now I want you to see if you can get a little bit of a stretch into the shoulders here. So walk your hands forward so you feel a pulling sensation into the shoulder joints. So we're creating some space into the joint. Okay, from this position, we're going to take our body weight forward while keeping our knees on the mat. So we're coming into an upward facing dog, but with our knees on the ground. And then taking your sit bones back down towards your heels. So let's do this a few more times, starting to get some prana, some energy moving through the body. So coming forward as you lift up into our upward dog, and then back into our child's pose. Coming forward back and we'll do this two more times coming forward and back and last time here coming forward and then back okay lift your head up now and have a look at your hands so we're going to be preparing ourselves for our downward facing dog so we want our hands to be about shoulder width apart spreading our fingers wide and anchoring our hands down to the mat so as we lift up into a downward facing dog i want you to bend your knees and then draw your chest back towards the top of your thighs now for some people this is already strong enough for them in this pose um, if, however, you'd like to go a little bit deeper into the asana, you can start to drop your heels down towards the ground. Now, maybe you'd like to walk on the spot here so you can alternate one heel down closer towards the mat and then change sides. So you get some length into the back of your legs, feeling that stretch into your calf muscles and your hamstrings and maintaining that length along your spine. Now, you're welcome to stay here in Downward Facing Dog. Maybe this is already enough for you in your practice today. If, however, you'd like your practice to be a little bit stronger, we're going to ripple our body weight forward into Plank Pose, and then we're going to push back into Downward Dog for five. So we've got one as we come forward to Plank, and then push back into Downward Facing Dog. Two, remember you can leave this part out if you need to. Stay in Downward Dog if it better serves you three, four, staying connected to your breath, and last one here, five. Okay, from here we're going to bend our knees as we look at our hands, and then we lightly walk our feet up to the top of the mat. Uttanasana, fold your chest down towards the top of your thighs. Now take your feet a little bit wider here. So take them towards the edges of the mat and we're going to make our way into our ragdoll pose. So opposite hand to opposite arm, let your head hang heavy and you can add a little bit of movement. So you can gently sway from side to side. You can shake your head yes and no. That can feel like a nice release through the neck. 
And if you prefer to take another arm variation here, you can always take your hands behind your back and interlock them and let them drop overhead. So you feel that deeper stretch into the shoulders. Use your breath, breathe in. And then as you exhale, relax. Imagine that you're breathing out and releasing tension from your body and see if you can soften and go a little bit deeper into this pose. So always trying to find ways to create more length into the body and go a little bit deeper into these stretches as we move through our sequencing. Releasing your hands down to the mat now. Take your feet in a little bit closer, so just roughly about hip width apart. Bending your knees so that you're not locking your joints. Very slowly, we're going to roll up, stacking one vertebrae at a time. Breathe in as you circle your hands up. And as you exhale, taking your hands down to your heart center. Summer seat to heat, equal standing pose. Okay, moving into our standing sequence now. So starting with our tree pose. So we want to anchor our right foot down into the floor. You might like to imagine that like a tree, your right foot has roots grounding and stabilizing you here. So there's a few different variations for tree pose. If your balance is a little bit off, maybe you'd prefer to just take your left foot to the floor and ground that left foot down into Mother Earth. If however you want to test your balance, you can take your left foot to your calf muscle or you can take your left foot to your inner thigh. It's really important that we don't take our left foot to our knee joint because we don't want to push the joint to the side. So we tend to open up a little bit through our hip as we come into tree pose. So square your hip back towards the front of your mat. Hands in Anjali Mudra or maybe you take Chin Mudra with me. So pressing your pointy finger and your thumb together. Relaxing your shoulders down away from your ears and finding a focal point, drusty gaze, something to help with your balance. Okay, so from our tree pose, we're going to hug our left leg in towards our chest and then maybe you'd like to draw some circles with that left foot. So circling in one direction, releasing tension through the ankle and then you can change direction here. Now you're welcome to stay in this version of the pose or maybe you'd like to add a twist with me. So if you'd like to add a twist, extend that left arm back and you can stay here or you can get some length into your left leg. Okay, from here, we're going to change this to our dancer's pose. So left hand to your left foot. And then we want this upward motion here, almost as though we're reaching our right hand back for our left foot. And as we release, coming into our Art of Chandrasana, our half moon. So I want you to take this pose to your limit. So for some people, they find that just staying here is enough of a balanced pose for their body. Some people even need to use the wall. So you could take this to the wall and lean back into the wall for support. If you want to go for a stronger variation, take that right hand closer to the floor, take that left leg up higher and take your left hand up higher. Now you can stay here or you can also go a little bit deeper into the hip by taking your left hand to your left foot for that sugar cane variation. Just taking a few breaths in our poses so we can feel the effect of the pose in our body. Okay, slowly releasing. Let's connect our left foot to the floor and we're going to make our way into our warrior two. So have a look at your feet, heel to arch alignment, nice and wide with your stance. So if you notice that this right knee is coming over the top of your foot, you need to go a little bit wider here. So arms up, breathe in. And as you exhale, sink your body weight forward. Ground down into Mother Earth. Feel the support of the floor beneath you. Anchoring yourself in your body, in your practice today. Let's reverse our warrior. So left hand down, right hand up. Feel that lengthening through the front of the body here. Maybe even taking that left arm behind your back if it feels good. And then let's come into extended side angle. So right arm to our right leg, left arm overhead. Now sink down a little bit lower through your hips and then feel that line of energy from your left foot all the way through to your left hand. If you'd like to go for an even stronger variation here, you can take your right hand to the floor, 
even a block. Okay, we're releasing that left hand down now and then we're taking our right hand up so we're adding in a twist. Now if you need some added support, you can always drop that left knee down to the floor. Otherwise, keep that left leg elevated. Now you can stay here for a few breaths or you can add in a twisted half moon with me. So if you're going to add in that twisted half moon, come forward a little bit, take that left hand forward and then lift your left leg up. Okay, as we come out of our twisted half moon, you can take your right hand to the floor and maybe you just hover your left foot up off the ground. If that's even a little bit too strong for you, you can lift up a little bit higher. So you can come into an upright position and just lift that left foot up. So maybe that's your version of standing splits and that's enough for you in your practice today. Or if you'd like to go for an even stronger variation, you can drop your chest down towards the top of your right leg, breathing in. And then as you exhale, relax here. Feeling that stretch into the right hamstring and into the glute. Okay, lifting up a little bit higher now, we're going to do some toe taps with our left foot. So we want to tap our left foot to the ground and then lift our left leg up. And we're going to be doing five of these. So we've got one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, let's come back to that pose that we started with. We're going to hug our left leg in towards our chest releasing our left foot down, adding in a side body stretch here. So draw your arms up, take hold of your right wrist, breathe in. And as you exhale, lean to the left and feel that lengthening through the right side of your body. And come back to center, let's change sides. So breathe in. And then as you exhale, lean to the right, feel that length through the left side of your body. And back to center. Okay, let's do that sequence on the other side. So we're starting with tree pose. So this time we want to anchor our left foot down into the mat. And again, like a tree, you might like to pretend that your left foot has roots grounding and stabilizing you down into the earth. So your variation of tree pose, remember that you can keep your foot on the floor. You can take your foot to your calf muscle or you can take your foot to your inner thigh. If your hips have opened up a little bit here, square them back to the front. Almost fell out of that pose then. So square them back to the front. You can have your hands in Anjali Mudra or you can come up into Chin Mudra with me relaxing your shoulders down. So don't worry if you fall out of these balance poses, just come back into them. Okay, as we release, let's hug our right leg in towards our chest now, and we'll draw some circles with our right foot. So we're releasing any tension through that ankle joint. And then we're going to add the twist now. So we're going to extend our right arm back you're welcome to stay there, or maybe you'd like to get a little bit of length into your right leg. And then as you release, coming into our dancer's pose. So right hand to the inside of your right foot, left hand up. As we release, moving into our Ardha Chandrasana. So again, maybe you stay here and maybe that's enough for you in your practice, or maybe you're even up a little bit higher, or you can take your left hand down to a block or to the floor. And then if you'd like to add in that sugar cane variation, you can take your right hand to your right foot, opening up through the hip, breathing in. And as you exhale, relax here. Okay, as we release out of this pose, we're going to come into our warrior two. So have a look at your feet, check your positioning, heel to arch alignment, wide with your stance, arms up, breathe in. And as you exhale, sink your body weight forward. Reversing our warrior now, so right hand down, left hand up, maybe even taking that right arm behind your back if it feels good. 
and then releasing into extended side angle. So left arm to your left leg, right arm overhead, sink down through your hips. Now maybe this is strong enough for you in your practice today, or you can drop your left hand down to the floor and sink down a little bit lower. Okay, releasing our right hand to the floor now. Paripta Paj Vokanasana, so we're adding in that twist. So take that left hand up, and if you need some support in this pose, please drop that right knee down to the floor. Otherwise, keep your right leg elevated. All right, from this position, we're coming into our twisted half moon. So step that back foot in a little bit, move your right hand forward, and then raise that right leg up. So this is quite a challenging pose for a lot of people. And then as we release, left hand down. Now your version of standing splits, so maybe you stay here and you simply hover your right foot up off the ground. Maybe you need to lift up a little bit higher and you simply elevate that right foot up here. Or if you want to go even deeper into the pose, Fold your chest down towards the top of your left leg as you take your right leg up. Breathe in and as you exhale, relax and soften. Feeling that really deep stretch into your left leg and into the glutes. Not rushing through our poses, taking a few breaths here to really feel the effects of the pose in our body. Okay, let's lift up a little bit higher now so we can come into our foot taps for five. So we've got one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, ground that left foot into the floor, test your balance, and then hug your right leg back in towards your chest, going a little bit deeper into the hip flexors and release your right foot to the floor. Let's add in our side stretch. So we we'll take hold of our right wrist this time, breathe in. And as you exhale, relax and lean to the left as you feel that length through the right side of your body, growing tall. And let's change sides. We'll take hold of our left wrist, breathe in. As you exhale, lean to the right, creating that length through the left side of your body and coming back to center and releasing well done let's come into malasana now so we want to take our feet into a v-shape here our heels are in a little bit closer and we're going to squat down so you can come into your version of a squat i find that some people need to use a block with this one so some people like to sit onto a block so that they have some support or even take a block underneath each heel However, maybe you can simply take your feet all the way down to the mat. Maybe you can even remove the support of your hands and then use your arms to push your legs open a little bit more. So you feel that opening through the hips, releasing tension through your base chakra, your muladhara. Breathe in. And as you exhale, relax here. Okay, gently releasing out of our malasana, coming down into our seated butterfly. So we'll bring the soles of our feet together, sitting up nice and tall, anchoring your sit bones to the floor. Breathe in. And as you exhale, start to tilt forward a little bit from your hips. And gently coming back up. We're going to make our way down onto our back now and you may like to have a block handy for the next pose. So we're going to do bridge pose but we're going to be doing bridge pose lifts and you may like to take a block in between your legs so that you can squeeze the block as you're lifting up so that you activate a few more muscles. If you don't have a block it's absolutely fine you can still do the pose without the block. So start to recline here so we're walking our feet back so that our feet are closer towards our bottom. And then we have our knees roughly about hip width apart. And then if you'd like to use a block here, you can take the block to the narrow option in between your legs and you're going to squeeze the block. Now, in our bridge pose, we want to start with a neutral spine. So a neutral spine is simply 
the natural curvature of the spine. So when you're laying on your back, there will be a little bit of a gap between your lower back and the floor. So we gently draw our pelvic floor muscles up, we draw our navel down towards our spine. So we've got that energy sealed into our core. Now for our first bridge pose lift, we're going to tilt our pelvis backwards so we imprint our lower back into the mat and then very slowly we're going to roll up, stacking one vertebrae at a time as we lift up, or I should say peeling one vertebrae at a time up off the mat as we lift. And then very, very slowly and gently we're going to roll back down, imprinting one vertebrae at a time onto the mat as we come back to that neutral position. So we're going to do four more of these and maybe you'd like to just focus on your pelvis and your spine and activating through your core or maybe you'd like to add some arm movement as well. So if you're going to add the arms with me, we're going to tilt our pelvis backwards so that we're pressing our lower back into the floor and then we start to raise our arms up and then we take our arms overhead and then very slowly rolling back down. So let's do three more of these. So lifting up, paying attention to how your body is feeling in these bridge pose lifts and slowly rolling back down. Two more here, tilting the pelvis backwards, lifting up and coming back down. One more time here, tilting the pelvis backwards, taking those arms overhead as you lift up and then slowly rolling back down. Okay, we're going to lift up into a bridge pose here. So we'll lift up and we're going to squeeze the block. Now you're welcome to stay here in bridge pose. If it's even a little bit too strong for you, you can remove the block and you can take it underneath your sacrum at the base of your spine and you can come into a supported bridge pose if you prefer. And if you'd like something even stronger, you can do wheel pose with me. So take your hands next to your head, lifting up. Staying here for a few breaths. And slowly and gently coming back down, hug your legs down towards your chest and gently rock from side to side. Or maybe you'd like to draw some circles with your knees, releasing your lower back. Coming back to a center position here, we're going to rest our right foot on the floor as we take our left leg up, breathe in. And as you exhale, guide your left leg back towards your chest. You can keep your right foot on the floor or maybe you'd like to extend your right leg here. So feeling that stretch into the hamstring. And if you like, you can add some resistance. So we're going to push our left leg into our hands as we pull our hands back into our legs So resist and then relax, take another breath in. And as you exhale, see if you can guide your left leg back a little bit closer towards your chest. Okay, we're going to bend our left knee now, taking our left leg over to the right. We're moving into our supine twist. So we want to keep this left shoulder anchored to the floor as much as possible. So you might like to imagine that I'm anchoring that um, left shoulder down to the mat. So you can imagine that someone is resting their hand on your shoulder and pushing it back or that it's weighted there. Breathing in and as you exhale, relax into the twist. And as we come out of our twist, we're going to come into reclined pigeon pose. So rest your right foot to the floor, left leg on top of your right, Recenter your body to the center of your mat. You can push your left leg away from you or you can guide your right leg back towards your chest. So you'll feel this one a little bit more into the glutes and into the piriformis. And release, let's do that on the other side. So we'll anchor our left foot to the floor. Take your right leg up, take your hands behind your right leg, breathe in. And as you exhale, relax as you guide your right leg back towards your chest. And if you prefer, you're welcome to extend your left leg here. 
So let's add a little bit of resistance now. So we're going to push our right leg into our hands as we pull our hands back into our leg. So resist and then relax, breathe in. And as you exhale, see if you can gently guide your right leg back a little bit closer towards your chest. Okay, as we come out of our hamstring stretch, let's make our way into our twist. So bend your right knee as you take your right leg over to the left, anchoring that right shoulder down to the floor. So you'll get the most benefit from this twist by keeping the back of your shoulders um, pressed down into the mat. As we come out of our twist, we're going to make our way into our reclined pigeon pose. So left foot to the floor, right leg on top of your left to realign your body to the center of your mat. You can push your right leg away from, for, from you. And often um, most people find that this is already enough sensation for them in their body. Or you can take hold of your left leg, breathe in. And as you exhale, gently guide your left leg back a little bit closer towards your chest. So noticing where you're feeling this stretch, hopefully you're feeling it through the right side of your glutes. And gently release, hug your legs down towards your chest again, draw some circles with your knees so that you're massaging your lower back into the floor. And then to finish our practice today, we're going to take our feet nice and wide towards the edges of the mat and then just drop your legs in so that they touch. I want you to have that neutral spine again and find a position that's comfortable for your hands. Maybe you rest your arms by your body or just gently rest your hands to your abdomen. Reconnect with your breath at the end of your practice. Take a deep breath in. And a long exhalation out. Noticing how all of those poses have made you feel today. Hopefully you're feeling a lot more grounded in your body and connected to yourself at the end of your practice today. And I'm going to leave you here. So you're welcome to stay in this pose for a little bit longer if you feel like you need to have a longer rest. Otherwise, you're welcome to continue on with your day. I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you again soon. Namaste.